Terrorism is an issue of global concern and the advent of Boko Haram terrorism have led to the significant loss of lives and properties. According to the Institute for Economic and Peace Global Terrorism Index 2023 report, between 2007 and 2022, terrorism in Nigeria resulted in the death of 10,768 people. The United Nations High Commission for Refugee, 2020, also suggest that Boko Haram have led to the displacement of over 2 million people in Nigeria's northeast region. Of utmost concern, is its impact on communities and research have shown that community resent the reintegration of former Boko Haram members and defectors due to a number of reasons including lack of confidence in government reintegration program, lack of trust in the genuine reform of former Boko Haram members, trauma suffered by affected victims, and communities, perceived injustice and the provision of incentives to former Boko Haram members, IKL, 2022. Yet there seems to be limited research that have sought to address this pressing issue suffered by affected communities and victims. In terms of methodology, a mixed method experimental design was utilized alongside a purposive sampling technique. 24 participants who were victims of Boko Haram terrorism were recruited from Borno State and its environ in Nigeria. Concerning the intervention, the trauma-informed cognitive behavior therapy is a 12-session intervention that addresses issues such as dealing with depression, negative thoughts, trauma and problem management techniques. Data was collected using surveys at baseline and end of intervention and interviews including focus group was also conducted with the participants. The quantitative data was analyzed using the Wilcoxon sign rank test, while the qualitative data was analyzed using thematic analysis from a social identity theoretical lens. The study also received ethical approval from the Teesside University School of Social Sciences Humanities and Law Research Ethics Committee. Based on the collated data, the study reported higher retention rate as all participants completed the baseline and end of intervention assessments with only few missing some of the weekly sessions. For the quantitative result, while it's a pilot study not fully powered, there was some improvement in managing their trauma when the end of intervention scores is compared to the baseline scores as shown in the screen. The study also reported some positive improvement towards attitude concerning the reintegration of former Boko Haram members and defector. As such it is recommended that a fully powered trial be adopted to further test for the effectiveness of the intervention across longer time period. Regarding satisfaction with the intervention, there was also a high level of satisfaction with 79.2% indicating their satisfaction and willingness to recommend the intervention to others, in addition, 91.7% of the participants indicate the acceptability of the intervention, with only 8.3% indicating it is slightly acceptable. In terms of the qualitative data, it was found that prior to the intervention, majority of participants were resentful towards the reintegration of former Boko Haram members for a number of reasons including, trauma, perceived lack of transitional justice and lack of confidence in their genuine reformation. However, after the intervention participants showed and expressed more positive attitude towards reintegration. As one female participant from Borno said and I quote, I was personally affected by Boko Haram terrorism. I lost my home, loved ones and even became displaced as a result. Before this trauma-informed cognitive behavioral therapy intervention, any time I think about the reintegration of the repentant Boko Haram members and their families into our community I get filled with resentment and anger. I also relive the trauma and depression I suffered as a result. In fact, I detested their reintegration into the community. After the trauma-informed cognitive behavioral therapy intervention, participants were more positive towards reintegration. One female participant commented, I still recall the pain I felt as a result of Boko Haram terror. My house was burnt down and I lost everything. After this intervention, I must say that my mindset is more positive, and I now believe those once affiliated with Boko Haram could change genuinely and deserve second chance. I am now able to manage my emotions through more positive thoughts which have significantly improved my mental well-being and overall productivity. On a slightly similar vein another male participant said. The program is really a, 
educative, and very much interesting and personally, I have learned a lot because some of the scenario that were discussed. I happen to be a victim of some of them and from what were discussed and the suggestions of people I came to realize that, life is all about how you view it personally and I have learned to view life in a positive manner and to those that have joined Boko Haram or those that are involved in crime activities, some of them they give you one reason or the other as a result of frustration. But this program, if they are open to that, it will help them to realize that you know, no matter the pressure in life, no matter the condition, one may find himself, he or she should not resort. Collectively, the findings suggest that providing psychosocial support to affected victims and communities might be helpful in improving attitudes towards the reintegration of former Boko Haram members into society. As such suggesting a model that provides practical outcomes to inform policies aimed at improving reintegration. Acknowledgement, this video and its content was funded by the British International Studies Association administered through Teesside University, United Kingdom. Thank you.